Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we're going to begin the funeral services of Mr. Barry Allen Siegel. Rabbi Jeffrey Weil from Ezra Havonim, the Niles Township Jewish Congregation, will be officiating. We welcome those of you who are online and those of you who are here. At this time, Rabbi Weil is going to perform the ancient ceremony of Kriya, tearing of the ribbon. I'd like to invite those of you wearing the ribbon to please rise and stand in place as the rabbi begins with the blessing. So, Debbie and Donna and Lisa, please, please rise. Yeah, so the, the mourners, the three traditional mourners, everyone's mourning and grieving, but the three mourners are the wife and the two daughters. You have the, what we call the Kriya ribbons. Kriya means tearing. Um, no, 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 yes. So the three of you who have the ribbons should be standing. And, um, right, those should be on the, on the, on, over the, on the other side. So that's the hearts, right, over the heart for the girls. Yeah. So no, no, Debbie, you keep yours the way, it, where it is. For the children, it's over the, over the heart. And um, in, the, in the Bible, when something, when something calamitous happened in the Bible, our biblical forebears would really do two things. You're just, just, just like that is perfect. They would do two things. One is they would, they would tear their garments, in, in a sense, exposing their, um, their vulnerable hearts, uh, times of uh, shocking moments, times of great sadness. Um, and that's what that's called Kriya, that's tearing, that's what these ribbon, ribbons represent. The other thing that they would do, um, men and women, they would raise their voices um, in, uh, in sadness and with, with, with tears and, and lamenting. And so the blessing that we, we recite at a time like this, which you'll repeat after me in a moment, acknowledges God as the true judge. And our tradition nudges us in that direction to understand God in that way, even at times that we might doubt that. But our tradition wants us to to, wants us to affirm that God is the Dayan HaEmet, the true judge, even at a time of sadness. So please repeat after me. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Dayan HaEmet. Amen. You may be seated. Adonai, ma adam v'te da'ehu, ben enosh v'te chashvehu, adam lehevel dama, yama ketzel over, v'boki yatzitz v'chalach l'erev, yimolel v'yavesh, tashev enosh ad daka v'tomer shuvu v'nei adam. These are the words of the psalmist saying, Adonai, eternal God, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you would even be mindful of us? We are all of us just a breath. Our days are a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning it shoots up and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers, such is our lives. God, you cause all of us to return unto dust, saying, Shuvu v'nei adam, return, O mortal ones. Would that we were wise, with that we understood whither we go from here, from when we die, we carry nothing with us, not our glory, not our riches. But God, you say, Shmor Tam Ur Eyashar. Mark the wholehearted, behold the upright. Those are the ones who shall find shalom, who shall find peace. Basof, in the end. Friends, we gather today to remember one who was Tam Eyashar, wholehearted and upright. He was, he was fun, he was devoted, he was loving Barry Allen Siegel. Adonai, mi agorba ohalecha, mi yishkom bahar kotshecha, holech tamim upo el tzedek, v'dover emet vilvavo. Adonai, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell in your holy mountain? It is those who are uprights, those who do justly, those who speak the truth within their, within their hearts, who wouldn't slander others or wrong them or exploit them, who scorn lawlessness and honor the Lord. Those who live in such a way shall never be shaken. You'll find in our handouts the translation of the 23rd Psalm. 
I will read it um, in Hebrew first, and then we'll read and we'll read that together. Adonairoi lo exar, ino desha yarbitzeni al mei minuchot ina haleni nafshia shovev. Gan cheni ba ma'agle tzedek l'ma'an shemo. Gan ki elech begeit zamavet lo irara ki ata imadi. Shiv decha umishantecha hema ina chamuni ta aroch lefanai shulchan neged zorai di shanta v'shem roshi kosi revaya. Ach tov v'chesed yudafuni kol yimechaya v'shafti v'beit adonai. The Lord is my shepherd. Together, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The uh, familiar words of the uh, third chapter of what we call Kohelet. Um, which in English is Ecclesiastes. They are familiar, popular from song and more. And uh, they also convey this idea that everything in life is, is unfolding in a way that, they, that, that things should unfold. Again, even when the natural order seems disrupted um, or difficult to accept, the um, idea from King Solomon, who according to tradition wrote these words, is that things do flow out in an appropriate way. And sometimes that really is very difficult for us to accept and understand. La kozman ve eit la kol chefetz tachet hashemaim. Eit la leret ve eit la mut. Eit la taat ve eit la kor natua. Eit li frot ve eit li pnot. Eit li kot ve eit li schok. Eit svod ve eit rakod. For everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant, a time to uproot that which is planted, a time to tear down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, a time when we must refrain from our embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to discard, a time to tear, a time to sow, and a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. And so this is an appropriate time to speak, words in memory of Barry Siegel, in memory of the life that he, that he led. This week, last week, we celebrated the one Jewish holiday. This is actually quite astounding the one Jewish holiday that our sages and Talmud said that we're going to continue to celebrate during the Messianic era. Of all holidays, Purim, which is literally considered one of our, our minor holidays, but it's Purim, according to the sages, this holiday of reverie and irreverence, I'm sorry, revelry, irreverence, joking around, fun, a little bit, of, a little bit wild. We won't celebrate in the Messianic era era, the thrill of Passover's liberation. We won't celebrate Shavuot's awe of receiving the Torah. We won't be atoning during the Messianic days. We'll be joking around, according to this idea. We'll be joking around and playing on Purim. Such is our tradition, always a little bit surprising, always trying to nudge us. It is fitting that Purim was literally just minutes away minutes from beginning, as Barry Siegel's life was concluding. It is as if he were passing the baton. For Barry, too, was a fun man, 
He loved to joke around. He was playful. He had a great sense of humor. And Purim is also about strength, the strength of Esther and Mordechai and the courage of Esther and Mordechai in the face of physical challenge, physical um, danger, hardship. This too describes Barry. He contended with his own struggles, physical struggles, and he met them always with strength and courage, which is inspiring. He was the son of parents, Louis and Helen, brother to Mickey. The family first lived in Albany Park, but then followed the pattern of many Jews of Chicago at that time, moved to Skokie, lived on Howard's, Howard Street, and he went to Niles West. The family business, of course, was US Royal, and Barry and others of that generation entered the business, learned the business. Barry was a young go-getter. He was ambitious. He got busy at this early stage of his life, married Kathy, he, he was a very young man, man at the time, and then impressively launched b and Automotive when he was in his mid-20s, perhaps. It was located first, I hope I get this right, on Elston Avenue, then West Wolfram in Logan Square, and then finally in, on Le Moyne. He was a person who really did pursue what he wanted pers to, to pursue at the right time, and so he began the family, he began the business, and he did what was right in, in every sense. Certainly for Donna and Lisa, his daughters, he pursued fun. He was a fun, a fun father. In addition to their happy memories of their trips to Florida and to California to see both sides of the family, there were the smaller moments of fun too. Small but large, really, of their playful, fun, and of course loving father at home. He loved to joke around, he loved to play games. And of course, and this was a recurring theme in our conversation that I had with the, the family yesterday, he loved to eat sweets, whether it was seized chocolates, Twizzlers, I know that I'll get some of this wrong so I don't want to be too specific because he was very particular about what he would eat. Licorice of a certain color or flavor. Sweets were part of the fun of living for Barry. And he sought, in a sense, it was a symbol. It represented something. It was, it was fun, and he wanted to bring that fun and joy to others as well. He was an inclusive person. If he was having fun, if he was, if he was having fun and his daughters were having fun, he wanted more to have fun as well. Like their friends, he wanted to go out to get ice cream for them and candy and so forth. He wanted others to enjoy what he was enjoying. And their friends, Don at least his friends, might even get another treat which is sweetness himself, Walter Payton, right, visiting the house at times. Barry was an avid sports fan and he had connections to local professional athletes. That must have been quite a thrill. These relationships, these connections, they were indeed paramount to his life with lots of different, lots of different people. His life really revolved around the family and friends. He remained close to Mickey and with Jordan, Ashley, and Lindsay. He was also very devoted to to cousins who were also dear friends, David, of course, Gary and Bobby, Hannah, Kathy, Marsha, and also Marcy and Heidi as well. He was close as well to Kathy's sister, Karen, and with Danielle, Jason, and Chad, and with David Rogers, dear friend, and Pat as well, may her memory be for blessing. Barry related to each of them, each of you, in a special way, whether it was bonding over the business, going to games, gambling, traveling, and more. And then 32 years ago, another relationship began. A neighbor introduced Barry to Debbie, and this was the beginning of a beautiful friendship, for that is what they were for these three plus decades friends. They worked together, they lived together, traveled quite a lot together when that was still feasible. They were soulmates and ultimately husband and wife as well. What a blessing you brought to each other. Barry also was a beloved brother-in-law to Rob, Hal and Joyce, Michelle and Jonathan, and uncle to Andrew and Elizabeth, Zachary and Jennifer. Barry had been a runner, 
He played tennis and racquetball. You could see how vigorous he was in those, those days with that hair and that mustache. He looked like a strong, like a strong man. But of course, and he loved to travel too, which could be physically demanding. And that, of course, became harder over time. But though his body weakened, this is a man whose spirit did not weaken. He was strong. He fought. And he maintained his humor. And that itself demonstrates his bravery and his perseverance and his resilience. And he, of course, never lost his capacity for friendship and for love. And his love really grew as the family grew. He was a loving grandfather to Ali and Josh, Isabella, and Noah. No, he could not, as a grandfather, do all that he might have wanted to do. It was hard to travel, for instance. But he found a way to bond. And he demonstrated his love, of course. This is a sad moment. But while the sadness is not diminished by what we say here today, there is also, I hope, a sense of gratitude and wholeness and fullness as well. And there's gratitude because, among other things, just having had him in your lives, but also because these last days and hours were rich. They were truly blessed for him. They were full of love for a few reasons. First, there was the ice cream. He was not speaking very well towards the end, but he was able to barely articulate two words, ice cream. That's all he had to say. He didn't have to say haagen vanilla ice cream. That you knew exactly what he wanted. And it was on his lips, literally, in his final, final minutes. Secondly, it was a blessed time because he was home. And he had spent so much time in the hospital, months at a time, you know, in the last, uh, last year or so. And he was finally able to be home in the home that he shared with his beloved Debbie. And finally, it was a blessed time because surrounding his bed were Debbie and Donna and Lisa. And they were holding hands. And at one's final moment, truly, at one's final moment, what greater, what greater blessing could there be? And what greater way to give honor to a man at the end of his life? In Pirkei Avot, Ethics of the Fathers, Ben Zoma asks a question which is deceptively simple, I think. He asks, Ezehum Mechubad, who is the one that should be honored? Who should be honored? And he, his answer turned in on the question itself. The one who should be honored is the one, Hamichubad et Kohabriot. The one that should be honored is the one who honors others. The one who displays honor, is honor to other people. That is whom we should honor. Honoring others, being there for them, including them, being a true friend, showing love, being a wonderful husband, father, grandfather, uncle, brother, cousin, all those things. Barry Allen Siegel did all of this. And this makes for the life of a mensch Really, that's what you want out of life, to honor others and to be honored in return. And so for how he honored you, for all the ways that he generated fun for you, for all the ways that he brought sweetness to your lives, and also for all the ways he inspired you with his hard work and how he was a model of strength in the midst of physical adversity, challenge, and for all the ways he loved you and demonstrated that love to you, for all that and more, may Barry Siegel be amply honored. May his memory be for blessing. Amen. Josh? Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, my mom asked me to speak for her, so I thought I'd share some words from her and from myself about my grandfather. Uh, so 
these last three years, uh, I had an opportunity to connect with him in a way in which I didn't have, or maybe I did have, but wasn't taken advantage of before. And I'm beyond grateful to, to God, to, to Debbie, to my grandfather, that we were able to connect um, at such a challenging time. And I thought it brought so much, so much closure um, to his life. And it was, it brought so much closure to mine to be able to connect with him and understand him and to really understand the legacy of, of who I descend from, who my sister descends from. Um, the fifth commandment in the Torah is that you should honor your, your mother and father. And my mother, she fulfilled this in every, every sense of the word, every sense of the commandment, Stuck, sticking by his side at all times, giving him the nachas, the strength to continue to fight. And that's what my grandfather was. He was a fighter. He was someone who came from incredibly humble roots, son of you know, Jewish immigrants, he epitomized the American dream, the ability to, to pick up everything, to start with nothing, and then from there to start a family, a business, and a, a true legacy. Uh, my grandfather, Barry, was no ordinary man. He was a, a Levite, also known as a Levy, and this is one of the, the holiest lineages that a Jew can descend from. It essentially means that you could trace his Jewish lineage back to Moses uh, for over 3,000 years. And it's an incredible thing that we were able to discuss it. We were able to understand how special of a human being he really is. And he provides motivation for the entire family that we can do whatever we put our minds to. And that is something that in this, in this day and age, when so, much, so many people, they want to tell us what we can and what we can't do. We remember my grandfather, Barry Siegel, and we say we can do whatever we, whatever we can. Um, so I just want to say that, uh, you know, it was an amazing, he lived an amazing life. He has birthed amazing children, my mother and my aunt, who I look up to as role models in my life. And it's, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be something that we look back on and we, we will understand why these things are happening at this time, why he is the catalyst to bring so many people from all parts of the world all together. And may we forever honor our great grandfather, Barry Siegel, and may we carry on his legacy forever. Thank you, Josh Ishikoch. Lisa? How do I say goodbye to the man I have loved my whole life? I guess I can start by telling you a little bit about my father. He was kind, sweet, cool, and a very loving man. He was the kind of dad you wanted to have around all your friends, and they all wanted to hang at my house because he was so much fun to be with. He was a pleaser and wanted to make sure everyone around him was loving and had fun always. He has always told me to go after what I want and believe in myself. He did just that and started his automotive business from nothing and built it from the ground up into a very successful business. I have looked up to my dad. Okay, I just lost my place, sorry. I have looked up for my dad from day one and only hope that I can 
carry some of his traits and can be as successful in life and everything I do. My dad has given me his sweet tooth and started me on all my candy craves. Well, cookies too, ice cream, cinnamon rolls, donuts. Well, let's just say anything that has to do with sweets and carbs. I knew it might become a problem when neither of us could ever walk by a candy store, bakery, or ice cream shop and not stop and get something sweet. But still to this day, I won't admit that it's a bad habit that he passed on to me because, hey, if that's my worst habit at this time, I guess I'm doing pretty well. Which leads me to my next story. Every year, we'd go Christmas break on vacation with Hannah, David, Marcy, and Heidi to Florida and sometimes to their Palm Springs house with them. There are so many fun, crazy, and goofy memories from those trips that Don and I will never forget and cherish forever. But there was one chocolate chocolate place in Palm Springs that had these chocolate-covered caramel suckers that somehow my dad got the owner of the store to let Donna, Marcy, and Heidi dip our own lollipops in the bits, bins of chocolate and caramel and then sneak and stick our fingers in there too, which today would never happen. Well, let's just say they were so delicious that we took several boxes of them home with us every time we went there. Too bad it's not open anymore. Every spring break, we would go vacation to California and visit my Aunt Karen, my cousin, Danielle, Jason, and Chad. I remember my father would take all of us kids to the nearest candy store right when we got there and say, you all can get as much candy as you can hold in your hands, but if you drop something, then you're done. We were all stuffing our hands with as much candy as we could, and we heard my dad say, okay, Chad, you're done. You just dropped a chocolate bar. You can only get what you have in your hands at this point. He loved to play games. He made everything a game. Did I mention my dad was kind of a prankster? There was nothing more than he would love to do than get to me, get me all riled up and pull a prank on me. But after he did that, he knew he better run so fast because he knew I was gonna get him back even worse. I remember being at the Rascal House in Florida, having a nice brunch with my family, and my dad decides to throw a spitball at me. Needless to say, of course I was going to throw a spitball back at him. He then decided to take a bunch of napkins, dip it in water, and throw it at me. So again, of course, I did the same thing and chucked it back at him. He being the game player that he was, he took several napkins, dipped it in water this time, and threw it at me. But I ducked, and it landed on a lady behind us, dressed to a T, with a hairdo that reminded me of a big beehive bun. Well, we all know what happens when wet tissue plops down on something, or shall I say, someone. It was dripping down her face and all over her hair. Needless to say, the lady was furious. My mom started screaming that we need to get up and apologize, but my dad and I both were cracking up and could not stop laughing. But of course, he made me, being the child, go apologize to her and pretend it was my fault because he was way too embarrassed. There are so many great memories, wonderful stories, and fun times that my sister and I have had with my dad, but if I keep telling more, we might be here all night. My sister and I want to say a special thank you to Debbie, his wife, for loving him all these years and taking such great care of him, especially the last 10 years when he started showing signs he was getting worse. In the beginning of the speech, I said, how do I say goodbye to the one person I have loved my whole life? I guess the answer is, Dad, thank you for giving Donna and I so much love, bringing us so much joy to our lives, and giving us so many fun memories that will last a lifetime. Thank you for being our dad. You are so strong. You have fought so hard for so many years to beat MS, then pancreatic cancer, which unfor unfortunately then spread to your kidneys and liver. Um, but you fought like hell till the end. You are truly the definition of a fighter. Donna and I will miss you clearly and will love you always and forever. Josh, Allie, Bella, and no Noah love you so much and will miss their grandfather greatly. And I hope you know that you are so loved by so many people in this room and all the people watching this on Zoom too. Goodbye, Dad. Rest in peace. We love you forever. Thank you, Lisa. Debbie?
<clears throat> Barry loved the automotive parts business. He loved B&B Automotive. He built it. It was his baby. He loved the action. One minute he'd be on the dock buying catalytic converters, and the next minute he'd be inside selling a trailer load of bearings or scrap metal to China. It was all about making the deal, handling Barry's expertise, that extra penny or last dollar. Working side by side with him was like watching a master at work. Barry also loved to gamble. He started out years ago owning two racehorses, Freedom Spirit and Corky Zabon. They were harness horses. Freedom Spirit made him a bundle, and Corky Zabom was just that, a bomb. From there, it was Vegas, baby. He loved playing Baccarat with his cousin David and craps. He also loved slots and video poker. One day, we were at Majestic Star Casino in Indiana. Barry decided to put a $20 bill in a dollar sizzling seven machine. He hit it for $1,400. When the attendant came back with his money, she had him spin it off, and wouldn't you know, he hit it again, back to back. He didn't stop there. He went to a $5 sizzling seven and hit that for 5,000. While he was waiting to get paid, he played a $25 double diamond machine and hit that for $20,000. What a day. He was a lucky gambler. My husband, Barry, was such a loving person and always there for me throughout my life. We shared so many great times and lasting memories together. For 32 years, we have always been a team. When times got tough, and they did, it seemed like it was us against the world. But he would fight through it, and Barry was a strong fighter. Whether it was his MS, pancreatic cancer, chemo, radiation, in the end, pneumonia and an abscess. It was just too much for his body to fight any longer. I've lost my best friend, lover, husband, and soulmate. I love him more than anything in the world. I will miss him dearly. I'm glad you're at peace and finally out of pain. Love you, Bear. Love you the mostest. Thank you all. Leda hi reshit, uktira tachlit hachaim kemasahim, kahalicha kitzmicha mishalav mishalav. Birth is a beginning, death a destination, but life is a journey a going and a growing from stage to stage. And now the journey of the life of Barry Allen Siegel has sadly reached its conclusion. And so, O oh God, into your care we entrust his spirit. For you keep faith with your children in death as in life. Sustain us, O oh God, that we may meet with serenity the mysteries that lie ahead for us, so that when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will be with us, a loving friend in whom we put our trust. You, O oh God, are the light of our lives and our hope in eternity. Please rise now for the memorial prayer, El Malay Rachamim. El Malay Rachamim, Shochein Bam Romim, Hamatse Menuchanichona, Tachat Kanfe Hashkina, Im Kedoshim of Tehorim, Kizoha Rakiya Masirim, Et Nishmat, Bor Kansha Ben Lebo Halevi, the Helen, Shahalach Lola Mo, Baharachamim Yasti Rehu, Beseter Kenafab, the Olamim. Bitsor bitsor hachaim et nishmato Aranai huna chalato Vianuach b'shalom Al mishkavo b'nomar Amen Compassionate God, eternal spirit of the universe, grant perfect rest 
in your sheltering presence with the holy and the pure who shine like the light of the heavens to Barry Allen Siegel, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in your eternal presence and within the shadow of your wings. Let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace, and we say amen. You may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the service here at the chapel. The interment service will continue at Shalom Memorial Park Cemetery, located at 1700 West Rand Road in Arlington Heights. For those of you who will be driving in the funeral procession, the procession will be forming in our parking lot. Please obtain an orange safety funeral sticker to place on the right-hand side of your windshield. Have your bright lights and hazard lights on at all times. For additional measures of safety, we will be providing many of the cars with a flag that will be affixed to the top portion of your car. We'll have a car in the back of the funeral procession to hopefully keep other cars from entering the procession. And for your own personal safety, I strongly recommend using your horn liberally as you're going through the intersections. For those of you who are online, the information about the charity in his memory, PanCan, can be found on our website. And for those of you who are here, that information is on the service folder. We want to thank all those who are online to spend time with the family, and I know the family appreciates it. This time, I invite everyone to please rise and stand in place as we escort the casket of Barry Allen Siegel from the chapel, then you may return to your cars. <laughs> 